I'm the only person standing between you and a bank holiday weekend. <laughs> but you're the survivors, thank you very much. Um, Tim accredited me to capturing uh, misuse of a term and calling this the Karma Sutra method of production, uh, of uh, presentation. It's actually Pecha Kucha. Okay, but on the Karma Sutra theme, you're either going to be frustrated or you're going to be fulfilled by the end of this session. Um, I wanted to just um, make you aware, if you're not already aware, of the regional, national and European agrotech strategies that are out there at the moment, and a little bit about what we're trying to do to tap into those strategies and those funding opportunities. So like, unlike some of the other speakers, I'm not going to tell you about what we've done, but what we hope to actually network and how we hope to, to address this and uh, hit these particular opportunities. Uh, of course, the main driver for our particular subject area, agriculture, is uh, food security. About three or four years ago, we woke up to the fact that actually food security is a serious threat to us. Um, and in fact, in the month, this month, or well, last month, April, FAO predicted or showed that we're at one of the lowest uh, times of wheat food stocks in living memory. The same month we found uh, highly reported uh, the very rampant rust Puccinia that is sweeping across Africa and overcoming all genetic resistance uh, in Africa and leading to huge losses of uh, wheat yields and that this is penetrating up through the Fertile Crescent and into Russia and won't be long before it's knocking on our doorstep. Um, at the same time the European Commission is actually thinking of banning tabuknazole. Tabuknazole is the most effective control of rust. Okay, some ironies in all of that, I think, become obvious. But, of course, what we have to have in looking at trying to solve the food security issues are really sustainable solutions. Solutions which aren't short-termism, they're not just quick fix, they're actually going to have durability into the future. But it's clear they have to be some technical fixes, there's, usually that means we have got to have some innovation and the most important thing is that's got to come out of them. These have got to be applicable to the farming community who are actually going to use them and apply them and they've got to pl apply them within um, the framework that we've been hearing about and that is the environmental framework and the environmental friendliness of all of that that goes with it. Um, and we're seeing intensification in some areas and this has a number of risks associated with it which need to be evaluated, monitored and minimised. So, I've identified here, I think probably some of you will be aware, there are three basic opportunities for funding, three basic opportunities for engaging, for researchers to engage with this. There is uh, the local uh, funding opportunities, particularly through the LEPs, um, especially in Cornwall, and I say especially in Cornwall because Cornwall has been identified to have the next round of convergence funding with half a billion euros over the next five to seven years to be spent. Um, in developing uh, the economy of Cornwall, and agritech is one of their key strategies within that. Then there's a national agritech strategy, which is being led by BIS and other partners in government. And then, of course, we've got the international one, which is knocking on our door, and which we've had highlighted this morning in the societal challenge of food security, and that's the Horizon 2020 opportunities. It's almost like from five, certainly ten years ago, where agriculture was actually a very dirty word. Um, and, you know, we failed to uh, stick with our agriculture departments and uh, restructured. Um, we're now in a situation where actually the government has woken up to the fact that we've lost a huge amount of agriculture um, production capacity and education capacity. So, the local uh, LEP in Cornwall lies with Scilly has got a key intervention, it's FE3 and it's Agri-Food, agri Agri-Tech, Food and Sustainability and Innovation. Um, and also we have another strand which is the European Social Funding strand of research skills and training and high level skills training which we are working strongly with in Cornwall at the moment. Uh, we have the UK's Agri-Tech strategy, uh, that's led by DBIS, DEFRA and DFID and they have put out this ambition we want the, world, the UK to become the world leader in agricultural technology, innovation, sustainability, and exploit opportunities and contribute to food security. So we've got a very high ambition from national government. 
And you can see the level of investment that they're prepared to put into this at the moment. Uh, 60 million through the TSB, it's all there. Uh, another 10 million from DFID, um, and 90 million over 30 years. So there's some big funding opportunities. And in terms of trying to, to, to hit this, uh, we, we, we believe that we can only do it through partnerships and networks, and inter internally in the university, these three research groups have contributed to our REF submission, and looking at various aspects of our ag agricultural environment. And then we are integrated into this network, which is PPRE, the partnership for, in the peninsula. And that involves us, the BBSRC Research Institute at Northwick, Exeter and Dutchie College. And of course, we've done a skills mapping, as you'd expect, and a facilities mapping in that. And we are now actually uh, working with the Agricultural and Horticulture Development Board, who are producing a pan network, a pan European network of operational groups and actually have identified Cornwall and PPRE, so that's Devon and Cornwall, as to be our, one of the delivery centres in this, one of just two UK delivery centres for sustainable agriculture in the future. I won't bore you with all the detail, you can look at that on the slides afterwards, um, but this is actually going to form a Horizon 2020 application with all these different partners. And the one take home message from this is that there is fantastic opportunity, we're there trying to keep a toehold in that agricultural opportunity uh, for the future, but it takes a lot of work and a lot of planning. And if you're thinking that you can put in a Horizon 2020 application by next week, forget it. You need to plan this. You need to take six months to deliver on your objectives. It takes a lot of planning and it takes a lot of networking before you get to any chance of getting supported. But don't let, me, let, let that put you off.